Welcome to another Patho video. This is the second video in the video series about the complement system. Today let's talk about how the complement system becomes activated. In the previous video we talked about three ways that activation of C3 can enhance the innate immune response to microbes. They were, one, acting as an anaphylatoxin, two, acting as an opsonin, and three, formation of the MAC complex. But C3 itself must be activated before it can initiate these important responses. There are three pathways by which C3 can become activated. The classical pathway, the alternative pathway, and the lectin pathway. The classical pathway was the first to be discovered. This pathway starts when the variable region of a pair of antibodies attached to an antigen on a microbe. This complex will then activate C1, which will then activate C2 and C4. C2 is split into C2A and C2B, while C4 is split into C4A and C4B. C2A and C4B then come together to form an enzyme that cleaves C3 to activate it. And by now you know what activated C3 does. Acts as an anaphylatoxin to initiate degranulation of mast cells, opsonization, and cytolysis. The second pathway is known as the alternative pathway because it was discovered after the classical pathway. Instead of involving antibodies like the classical pathway, complement factors B, D, and P, also known as properidin, bind to lipid carbohydrate complexes on fungi and some bacteria. This binding will activate factor C3, causing it to split into fragments C3A and C3B. And like the other pathways, C3A and C3B initiate opsonization, cytolysis, and degranulation of mast cells. The lectin pathway was the last pathway to be discovered. One of the main lectins is mannose binding lectin or MBL. MBL acts as an opsonin and also activates the complement cascade. MBL is made by the liver and is one of the factors called acute phase proteins that are released under conditions of inflammation. When macrophages and neutrophils phagocytose bacteria, they release cytokines into the blood that travel to the liver and stimulate it to produce MBL. MBL is released into the blood and recognizes and binds to carbohydrates like mannose, which are found on the surface of bacteria as part of the cell wall and on some viruses. For example, MBL has been shown to bind to Candida albicans, the fungi that causes a yeast infection. Also viruses like influenza and HIV, as well as bacteria streptococci that causes strep throat and salmonella that can be transmitted by eating raw eggs. After MBL binds with the carbohydrates on the microbe, both C2 and C4 become activated. C2 is split into C2A and C2B, while C4 is split into C4A and C4B. C2A and C4B then come together to form an enzyme that cleaves C3 to activate it. By now you know what activated C3 does. Initiates opsonization, cytolysis, and degranulation of mast cells. Here's a summary now of all three pathways. Thanks for watching.